So we ended our last lecture talking about the epithelial surface features, such as lateral surface features, basal surface features, and the apical surface features. And we ended that part of that discussion with talking about cell junctions, uh, such as tight junctions, adherent junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. And just a quick elaboration of all those again, the tight ju junctions are so close that they are uh, sometimes impermeable. Um, and that's because uh, these impermeable ba barriers are formed because the adjacent plasma membranes, uh, the proteins, actually join, producing that zipper-like fastening. And we do see this in the stomach and with digestive secretions uh, that are contained in the stomach and in the kidneys to uh, hold the contents of those two organs in there without them um, infiltrating or, or coming through the membranes. Adherent junction or adhesion junctions, uh, are, they are transmembrane linker proteins. And what happens there is the adjacent plasma membranes uh, do not touch, but are held together by these extracellular filaments that are, that are firmly attached to uh, cytoplasmic plaques composed of dense protein materials. Desmosomes, those are anchoring junctions and the filament anchors to the opposite side. Um, desmosomes that join the heart muscle cells prevent the cells from tearing apart during contractions. And similarly, uh, the desmosomes that are in, found in the cervix, uh, th that is the opening of the uterus, uh, prevent the cervix from ripping when a woman is giving birth. And then the last one there, you have those uh, gap junctions, and they allow small molecules to move between the cells. Apical surface features, uh, these would be things like microvilli. Uh, microvilli are used to maximize the surface area so they can expand. Those are finger-like extensions of the plasma membrane um, of apical epithelial cells on moist and mucus secreting epithelial and the longest on epithelial that absorb nutrients such as the small intestines or transport ions such as found in the kidney. Cilia, those are whip-like modal extensions of the apical surface membranes. Uh, you could see the little cilia, they would move back and forth. Uh, some of the tissue types we've looked at so far um, have cilia, so they are ciliated or not ciliated. A flagellum, these are long isolated cilium. Um, they are only found in human sperm. So the flagellum is that whip-like structure. So in the picture here, you can see the cilium. Um, cilium. Uh, you see its basal body is centriole, and then you could see the cilium portion there and its composition. So you could see the cilia motion. So you have that uh, power stroke, recovery stroke. So you get that whipping back and forth of the, of the structure itself. All right. Our next basic tissue type would be connective tissue. Uh, connective tissue itself is a very diverse group. Um, connective tissue binds structures together, it provides support and protection. It fills spaces. It produces blood cells and it stores fat. Um, a general rule is that connective tissue cells are widely separated by non-living extracellular matrix composed of an organic ground substance that contains fibers and varies in consistency from solid to semi-fluid to completely fluid. The functional and physical properties of epithelial tissue stem from their cells. In connective tissue, the properties are largely de derived from the characteristics of their matrix, the, so the cellular matrix. So when we look at connective tissue, we see that we have connective tissue proper. An example will be fat tissue, fibrous tissue of ligaments. We have cartilage, we have bone, and we have blood. So connective tissue is classified um, based on the cell types, and uh, we have a great variety of subclasses here. So the common embryonic origin of connective tissue is mesenchyme. And then we have the cellular descendants from the mesenchyme called fibroblast, chondroblast, osteoblast, or, or hematopoietic stem cells. 
and fibroblast what could go on the a fibrocyte, chondroblast in the chondrocytes, osteoblast in the osteocytes, and the hematopoietic stem cell would go into the blood cells and macrophages. And then you have the classes of connective tissue that we result in connective tissue proper, cartilage, osseous or bone tissue, and then blood, and then each of those have subclasses. So under connective tissue proper, we have loose connective tissue. And then types of loose connective tissue includes areolar, adipose, and reticular. And then the other type of subclass there we have is dense connective tissue. And the types there we'd have regular loose connective tissue, irregular loose connective tissue, and elastic connective tissue. And then the next type we'd have a subclass under, under the class of cartilage. We have the subclasses of hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. Under the class of bone, we have compact bone and spongy bone, also known as cancellous bone. And we'll look at that when we do the skeletal system. And then under blood, we have the class of blood cell formation and differentiation. Um, and we'll study the complexity of blood in our blood chapter after uh, the cardiovascular system. So connective tissue, it originates from the embryonic tissue called mesenchyme. It's the most diverse and abundant type of tissue in the human body. There are many subclasses, which we have just gone through. Its function, again, is to protect, support, and bind together other tissues, uh, bones, ligaments, tendons, areolar cushions, adipose insulates, and is, food, uh, is a food source. Um, the blood cells are replenished, body tissues repaired. So the cells are separated from one another by large amounts of non-living extracellular matrix. And we'll look at that as we go through our studies. The extracellular matrix, uh, again, just as a recap from the cell structure function, is the non-living material between cells. It's produced by cells and then extruded outside of the cell. It's responsible for the strength. Um, two components of the matrix include the ground substance, which is of fluid or adhesion proteins and, and proteoglycans, and then liquid or semi-solid, gel-like or very hard. The second part of the matrix would include the fibers, and those fibers could be collagen fibers, elastic fibers, or reticular fibers. Basic functions of connective tissue reviewed, support and binding of other tissues, it holds body fluids. It defends the body against infections, such as macrophages, plasma cells, mast cells, and white blood cells, and storing of nutrients as fat. So let's look at our first class of connective tissue. We're going to go under the mesenchyme forming fibroblast, forming the fibrocytes, which will come together to form the connective tissue proper. And our first subclass there will be the loose connective tissue, and the types will be areolar, adipose, and reticular. So embryonic connective tissue, or mesenchyme. Uh, description of embryonic connective tissue is a gel-like ground substance containing fibers. Um, they are star-shaped mesenchyme cells. The function gives rise to other connective tissue types, and its location is primarily in the embryo. And here you can see the mesenchyme cell. Here you can see the ground substance. And then here you can see those fibers in this photomicrograph here. So from that, we get connective tissue proper. And here we're going to look at loose connective tissue, areolar. It's a gel-like matrix with all three fiber types. Cells are fibroblasts, macrophages, mast cells, and some white blood cells. The function, it wraps and cushions organs. It's macrophages, uh, phagocytes. Uh, phagocytized bacteria. It plays a, an important role in inflammation and it holds and conveys uh, tissue fluid. Um, phagocytized bacteria means it's going to take that bacteria in. So phagocytosis, cell eating. So it's eating those bacteria cells. Location, it's widely distributed under epithelial of body. Example is, is that it forms the lamina prop, uh, Propria of mucous membranes, packages organs, and surrounds capillaries. So here you can see the uh, epithelial tissue, and then down here we have the lamina proper. 
So in the, the micrograph here, we have elastic fibers, we have collagen fibers, and we have fibroblast nuclei. So once again, the loose areolar connective tissue, it commonly, it commonly lies between other tissues or between organs. It binds them together and the areolar tissue has a fine spiderweb appearance. And you can see that in there because the cells of the tissue are mainly fibroblasts, which are large star-shaped cells that produce extracellular fibers. Our next type of tissue would be adipose tissue, um, loose connective adipose tissue. You have the nuclei of fat cells, and then you have a vacuole containing the fat drop droplets. So you, you tend to get this, this very blotchy-like appearance on the uh, cell tissue samples. Um, the, matrix, the matrix is as an areolar, but very sparse. Um, these are closely packed adipocytes, or fat cells. Um, they have a nucleus that is pushed to the side by the large fat droplet. It provides reserve, for, uh, reserve food for fuel. So the fuel of our cells is fat. Um, it insulates against heat loss and supports and protects organs. Um, adipose tissue is that loose connective tissue in which the fibroblasts are enlarged and store the fat. And then there, it is limited in the extracellular matrix. So what we see there is the locations of adipose tissue can be found under the skin around kidneys, eyeballs, within the abdomen, and in breast tissue. Next we have the loose connective reticular tissue. Um, here we see a white blood lymphocyte cell. Here we see reticular fibers. And now here we have mast cells. So in looking at its description, it's a network of reticular fibers in a typical loose ground substance um, the reticular cells lies on the network and basically its function is the fibers form a soft internal skeleton that supports other cell types including white blood cells, mast cells, and macrophages. The location would be the lymphoid organs such as lymph nodes, bone marrow, and the spleen. Uh, reticular tissue cells and the matrix contains only reticular fibers, so that's why we get loose connective reticular tissue. Our next class would be dense connective tissue under connective tissue proper, and we have three types there. We have regular, irregular, and elastic. So looking at dense connective, dense irregular tissue, Here you can see the nuclei of the fibroblast. Here you can see the collagen fibers in the photograph. It's primarily irregularly arranged collagen fibers, some elastic fibers, and the major cell type is the fibroblast. The functions, you are able to withstand tension, exert it in many directions, provide structural strength. The location would be the dermis of the skin, submucosa of the digestive tract, uh, fibrous capsule of organs and joints. So the fibrous joint capsule, which you can see here. Our next type will be the dense connective regular uh, connective tissue. Here we see collagen fibers and the nuclei of the fibroblast. A description here would be primarily parallel collagen fibers, a few elastin fibers, and the major cell type again is the fibroblast. It attaches muscles to bones or to muscles, attaches bones to bones, withstands great tensile strength when pulling force is applied in one direction. And the location of these types of tissue, dense irregular connective, or my apologies, dense regular connective tissue, would be in tendons, most ligaments, and aponeuroses. Uh, aponeurosis itself, uh, aponeurosis is uh, the join between muscle to muscle. Ligaments is what connects bones.